Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about the Hanyuan Video Enhancement LoRa model. There's a new model that enables us to improve the human character generation quality in Hanyuan Video called Hanyuan Reward LoRa. And this is not a fine-tuned checkpoint model. This is a LoRa model that enables us to add an additional embedding on top of the Hanyuan Video model. With this, we are able to see improvements for characters, especially focusing on human characters, generating better strength. As you can see right here, the comparison of their test data, the one without Laura is pretty static. You don't see much motion or facial expressions of the character. This man sitting in the background like Paris. Whereas, when you see the Laura applied with this reward model, the characters are able to have more expressions and the characters are able to create more movement within the duration of the videos. Where you can see another difference is that there's an HPS and MPS reward type of model. We've talked about that in previous videos in Club Video X, where they also had a reward model from Alibaba Pal. That created an additional LoRa model for Cloud Video X, allowing us to generate more details in that specific model. Right now, we have the same concept applied to Hanyuan Video, using HPS and MPS reward modeling to train a LoRa model on top of the Hanyuan video model. This allows video generations to create more detailed qualities in terms of prompt following as well. Because when you do prompt following, these reward models are going to guide the base model. It's basically how it generates from those latent noises, all those details going through in the generations, and how that is going to reward the base model. You know, in a basic concept, it's like if you're doing something right, then you get rewarded with specific coins or energy, etc. like that. So basically, this is like a treat for the base model to tell it that when you're creating something right, following the prompts that users input, you get better rewards for the specific inference generations of the videos. And that's how we can bring better quality to the final output of the generated videos. So right here, it's very simple. All we need is the LoRa model, just like what we have when you're using Hanyuan Video LoRa or any diffusion model. You use the LoRa model, you have files like safe tensors, and here we got two types, the HPS and the MPS LoRa model, where you can download both of them. But in this video, I'm going to just run with the MPS because, as I mentioned, the MPS is a newer type of rewarding, and it's also more focused on human preference, according to this research paper. As you can see for the MPS, this is especially for the dimensions incorporating the MPS for human preference, where all the datasets are specifically trained for humans as the dataset in this reward model. For the HPS, well, this works as well, but most of that was used for image-to-image -image generation starting back in 2023. Now, we have newer models, newer concepts, with Diffusion Transformer AI video models. And of course, we're going to be using the newer things which will work better. So here, what we have to do is go back to Hugging Face, download the files, and here, just click this Download button. You're going to save that in your Comfy UI LoRa model folder. So for example, in my setup of Comfy UI, I have saved that in the LoRa folder, where I have another folder called Hanyuan Video, specifically for the Hanyuan and LoRa, then, I saved the safe tensor files in here, where I can get started with my Comfy UI. First of all, we have a very simple Comfy UI workflow for text-to-video videos. Well, this one is, you know, a lot of people have seen this in my previous videos before, where I've been using multi-LoRa for running two LoRa models in the same video generation. This is going to improve the LoRa effect in video generations when you're using something like a sample block. For example, here, you choose the block type, single block or just choose all that will not quite give better quality in terms of detail also the detail of the video generations following your text prompt is going to be less effective you can check out this comparison here and i'll do that in this demonstration so we have like a basic lore loader from comfy ui and let's say this one i'm going to use i'm going to use the hanyuan model like this mps reward model i'm using the typical lore loader in Comfy UI, and I'm gonna connect that with my Hanyuan model, the base model, and connect that with the workflow. I'm also going to create another LoRa model for a specific Hanyuan video character LoRa model. For example, I have this Asian female LoRa model in Hanyuan video, where I can use that. Of course, we can run the same method without the double block type, but you will see the difference between this and what the difference is with the multi-LoRa model when we're dealing with Hanyuan videos. So, 
Let's bring this up first, and we gotta bypass this. Let's stack this one here, a typical Laura Loader path for running the Hanyuan video. Very clear to have Laura 2 Laura model in here. Let's run one time, and you will see the difference. You will see the effect between video results after I generate a few of them with different settings of the LoRa model. Okay, so we got a generated result here. This is the first one that I generated. You know, the lady trying to do some fight pose, wearing the yellow tracksuit like the Bruce Lee style. What I did was just using the very typical Comfy UI default LoRa loader to run this too. I will be using another video combined for another result where I would disconnect this one and just put this right here and make this as a label easier for you guys to recognize this batch of generations. So here, this is the default Laura Lab Loader, new gen. And then the next batch I am going to do is I will connect this here, pause this one, and then we are going to generate another set of videos using the multi Laura nodes and using the double block because there's a difference in that to run this. So in order to do this, I will set another way, which is going to disconnect the reward model of the LoRa loader, and then I'm going to bring the multi-LoRa loader custom nodes to run the MPS reward model as a double block type. And this way we are going to see the difference with the same prompts and just a very short second of video as a demo. We will compare both settings to see how that is going to work. Okay, here's our generated result. Here we see both video generations. The first one that I tried with the default LoRa loader using the Comfy UI nodes generated, you see the same settings, same dimension size, and frame numbers. Everything is the same. Obviously, when we are using the MPS reward model and using the double block type in the LoRa settings, the LoRa loader settings, you see it's more clear. The clothing, everything on the wall is going to be sharper, more solid color. The elements such as representing the characters are also more solid. And where you see in the default Laura Loader, although we are using the MPS, we still are unable to get solid colorations or objects looking like they're generating in a very solid shape. It kind of feels morphing and sloppy. Some of the motions in the background and some gangster at the back. But then here we see the motion is very confirmable. The character is walking toward the camera scene. And then, you know, there are a few gangsters at the back and you know, you can feel that this is better quality in terms of the motions, the colorations of the videos, as well as the character, how the structure of the whole scene. And this is the block type difference that when we are dealing with diffusion transformers, we have different LoRa model embeddings on top of the base model. In language models, this is like knowledge base embedding, where you have additional stuff that is putting on top of the AI model. The same concept goes with videos or diffusion models as well. We have the LoRa model embedding, but sometimes it causes conflict if you haven't put the double block types for that. So this is the difference when we have double block types and not double block types, even when we are applying both using the MPS reward model. Let's try one without the reward model. So the upcoming generations, we are going to use another video combine. And this time I am going to use just the Laura character with the normal Laura loader, because there's only one Laura model I'm going to use. And that is going to be without the reward model. And you will see there's a difference between using Laura with the reward model and not using the reward model Laura. So here's the generated video that I'm using only the character Laura for styling and haven't used the MPS reward Laura model. As you can see, even though I'm using the same settings on all of the dimensions and the tile size for the VAE decode and the sampling steps, also 15 as well. The generation of the video quality compared with these two obviously shows that the one using double blocks with the MPS reward model is going to be of better quality. You see the details of the wall and the character's outfit as well as I hate it sometimes when her new videos are generated on a local PC. There are large dot pixels around those characters when it's fast moving. That's something that happens from this AI video model. Whereas if you are using the reward model for quality improvement, that's something that gets a little bit better improved. But some fast motions, for example, the hands are still happening with those large noisy pixels. On top of that, when I'm using low sampling steps and by default using the Comfy Eye LoRa loader nodes without the multi LoRa custom nodes, you see, 
even though I'm applying the MPS LoRa reward model, it's going to have a very large percentage of artifacts and noise in the generated video result. So, in this way, if we are not applying the double blocks with the correct LoRa model, we still cannot achieve a good result with that. So, for some people who are just loading by using the default ComfyUI LoRa loader to run, like this way these two are coming by default, the LoRa loader will have a very high percentage of being ineffective with quality improvement. So let me bring these two copies here so it's easier for you to understand. So, this setting for the default LoRa nodes to generate, I am using these two LoRa nodes where we don't have the double blocks, and even applying the reward model, you still have a pretty bad generated result. But then for the MPS reward LoRa, this is at least getting improved. And this setting, let's bring up the settings. What I did was using the normal LoRa loader and the double blocks reward LoRa loader here. So this one is going to be using the character LoRa, which is a normal LoRa loader, and also using the double block type of reward model. Therefore, I'm able to generate a better quality result. And then the third one that I generated just now, you know, very large, pixelated, noisy, and even the actions of the character, the backgrounds, those gangsters are not following what I did in the text prompts. Because it's just a cinematic scene of a movie shot here. But then those guys at the back and the girl's character act like dancing. This is only relied on the Laura character nodes to generate such a result here. So by only using the LoRa character with a reward model, sometimes you will see those generated results are not following what you want from your text prompts. And there's some little challenging for my text prompts here because I got a text prompt for a rainy day in this cinematic scene. Where is it? In the back street of the rain. And where this is in a rainy day. So you will see some noise going on in the video. But then, those are actually the raining effect generated from the AI video. But even having the raining effect in the second attempt generated result using the double blocks and reward model, I am still able to generate a very clear cut of all the objects in this second attempt generated video. And then lastly, let's try another one, which is going to use all LoRa models for the character and the reward model, and that is going to use the double block type you will see the difference of that. Now here's the generated result with two LoRa loaders using the double block type of loader where I am using the character LoRa and also the reward model LoRa model. And both are setting up as double blocks or you can use the first LoRa loader as a single block, whichever you prefer. But then it's still able to work as it is. And here, as you can see, the action movements are the same as what I have been using. The second attempt generating result using the normal LoRa loader for the character and the second loader using the double block for the result reward model where I have both. Let's drag it down to here and you will see that it's the same action movement here. So coming down to this section, both are going to be the same LoRa settings using one character LoRa and the reward model. And the only difference is that this time I am applying two LoRa loaders as the double block type and using the multi-LoRa custom node. And this time it is generating the same movement actions because of course the same seed number, same prompts. But then there's something different. When you close zoom in here, you will see there are still artifacts going on in this one, where you see the first seconds here when the character claps their hands and those pixelated effects appear in the first seconds, the first half second here. And there's some movement here. The hand is disappearing when we are using only one LoRa loader as a double block. I am more preferring this setting as well when this is fast motion. But then you can see they're still in the first half second here. At least we got one hand up here. Clearly, even though it's affecting motions, although both are having this same level of detail, well, I cannot say it's high quality detail because I'm using very low resolutions for the video generation here. But then, both in this generation attempt, it is very similar quality where I am using one LoRa loader with a double block for the reward model and then a normal LoRa loader for the character. It is less pixelated artifacts on the main character, but it's not a very large difference. But just a little bit of detail can be seen if you get a close-up shot detail of the videos. But then both, if you're just looking at that, it's very similar quality. So therefore, if we are using the reward model, I would suggest using the double block type because a lot of times we use Hanyuan video, we are going to apply our style LoRa.
If you train Laura for characters or train Lauras for specific styles for your videos, you are obviously going to apply at least one Laura already. And if you want to improve the quality without getting some effects like this, then you are going to use a double block type of Laura loader to get the reward model in the workflow. So that is a little bit of testing of this and this reward model. Laura is worth trying out for Hanyuan video because in previous Club Video X, we tried that in Cloud Video X model. In theory, this works for reward type Laura, and this also helps to improve the video's quality in terms of prompt following and the instruction of, you know, doing the prompt following as well as less artifact and better improvement on more solid colorations and objects for the video generation. So that is it for this video. And I hope this inspired you guys on how to use Laura in Hanyuan video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day. See ya.